Yes. Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. No, not voices. It's not so simple. He spoke directly to my soul, in a language no human tongue can express. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Black devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. I could get used to this, you know. That's a wonderful thought. I don't know what to say. I am grateful. Tis thoughtful indeed. Yes. Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. What can I say to them? What they believe is what the Chantry says, and the Chantry is infallible, yes? Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now.
Yes. Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, there were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? My fruit? Well, it is not technically forbidden, but, but it's not freely given either. Not everyone gets a bite. I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. The Chantry does not pride, and you should. I desired time apart from the world. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I don't know. I have no idea what the Grey Wardens do for them when they fall in battle. Dwarves don't practice cremation, do they? How do your people honor your dead? I heard about that, now that I think about it. Their spirits return to the rock, strengthening the foundation of the Taig. It sounds so strange. I suppose you're right. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. I'd like that. So would he, I think. What do you need? Ask away. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together.
Thankfully, no. You only start receiving lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. What do you need? Ask away. I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, she made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. Of course I do. It's just... I don't think you necessarily need Templar secrets to defeat the Darkspawn. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. This is not something small you're asking, after all. What do you need? Ask away. I already said I wouldn't. The answer is still no. What do you need? Ask away. Such as they are. That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. Just left? You mean just left Ferelden? I don't know. If there's an Archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the Blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlais and other lands would hear about it and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. I wondered that myself. It's not as if she valued me highly. I think she just didn't want to give anything to the Grey Wardens, is all. 
The Chantry didn't lose much. And I think I can do more fighting the Blight anyhow rather than sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. No, it's... Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be... It's fine. He died a hero. They all did. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. What do you need? Ask away. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Well, it wasn't until I was eight that I discovered you didn't have to lick yourself clean. Old habits die hard, you know. And my table manners too. Though, come to think of it, they weren't all that different from the other Templars. Or did I dream all of that? <laughs> Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on a cold, hard ground, isn't it? Hmm. Point taken. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him any more for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. I know who I was told was my father. He died even before my mother did, anyhow. It isn't important. Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten, just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Probably. It was just a kindness he did to a woman who had served him anyway. I didn't sleep on silk sheets in the keep or anything. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. I think so, yes. This news we've heard about him being sick disturbs me, though. I wonder if we won't discover that Loghain has come to the same conclusion as we have. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. What do you need? Ask away. Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. I keep it hidden under my pillow. Sometimes I'll take it out just so I can hug it fondly and remember the good old days. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eyes, you know. Oh, you know, between all the guilt and the hours spent in solemn prayer, any good Templar or priest is just bursting to tell a few good jokes when the opportunity arises. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring.
You know, I like the way you think. You're all right. If you're really curious, then I'll tell you. The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. The education, mostly, but also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. You're right. Best to concentrate on what we have to do right now. What do you need? Ask away. Oh, why you little... Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me, look. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Ugh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hair is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. I think I have enough meat where it counts, and I certainly don't need it in my pack. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. I just did. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. He is certainly manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. <sighs> I seek to understand the dog. We fight alongside each other and I must discover the strength of his heart. You are a true warrior, and worthy of respect.
You're a hard man to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy, Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins, Levy the trader. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Maker's breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden. Some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathisers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting all Legion Wardens in the kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The king himself went with the wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Aldland's decree, and the wardens came back to Ferelden for good. People say it's because the Wardens have become terribly unpopular. Just soaking up tires and not doing a bleeding thing for the Kingdom. I say that's bollocks, as recent events have shown. Marek was a bit of a visionary. A powerful mind, that one. In his travels with the Wardens, he must have seen how important their cause was. And been moved by it. Ferelden was ravaged by war, and your dwarven cousins, well, they had a proper appreciation of wardens. But make no mistake, King Marek was a giant among men. Oh, his stomach's all a flutter. You're welcome. My family, well, past a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last Warden Commander of Ferelden back when the Wardens were known as Freeloaders. So King Olin banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. Hard to say. After King Olin died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one, and our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the blight. We're not ashamed of that. I ask for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honour. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honour. Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar, said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. Mm -hmm. 
Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place, well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it, at least? A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Why are we stopping? There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. No. People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. I am. I have always fought in war, dwarf. Some of them. They aren't all alike. Generally. I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. As you wish. 
Yes. Sitting, as you observed. Your grasp of the obvious is remarkable. I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? Speak, then. Then I suggest we move on. I am hardly surprised. To answer a question. The Arishok asked what is the blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Why do you? Do you think the Kunari live on some other world, then? A portion of it? Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Yes. I cannot go home. It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. As you wish. What do you wish of me? If you must. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Oh? I truly doubt that children would be worth the effort. They are filthy, smelly things full of tears and snot and trouble. That said, I cannot speak for the tastes of my mother. She has, after all, lived a very lengthy time in the wilds and done many things I know nothing of. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. There were nights when the wilds called to me, it is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, proud shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. No, tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. 
Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could, but as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. I am surprised you think so. Still, it is a pleasant thing to hear. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? Oh! You're simply full of surprises, little man, aren't you? But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. What do you wish of me? If you must. I cannot teach you, no, but any other mages that cared to learn, yes, I could do that. Send whoever you wish my way, and I shall teach them what I can in the camp, provided they possess the will to even make the attempt. What do you wish of me? If you must. Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? Beg pardon then while I jump for joy. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. For the most part, Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped, and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told, but then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes?
Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you are very cute to ask so many questions. Really? Perhaps we should be wrapped in ribbons and adorned with flowers. So cute are we, too. <laughs> My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. They came with as much swagger and arrogance as they did self-righteousness. Pity them if you wish, for they held none for us. Flemeth would warn them once. T'was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. was a game and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? Oh? I would ask what exactly, but I'm certain that would be a lengthy conversation, and suddenly I grow very weary. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. Yes? If you must. <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? <laughs> oh, she is certainly old. Have no mistake of that. Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. Ah, I see. That does explain much. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. No, quite true, but this part only. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osin who was her husband and Conobar the jealous Lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osin and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife, and Osin agreed. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. 
was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and twas they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see, chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. You ask if I have sisters. I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that too. The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, Yes, I believe this tale, if not all. The demon within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. Ah, oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Yes? So... Full of questions, are you? <laughs> I assume you were actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly? I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child.
It seems likely, does it not? In an animal form, a babe could easily be spirited away and raised as Flemeth's own. I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another, and Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. Must one be a doting and simpering moron to be considered a suitable mother? Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. I shall take this as a compliment. Was it meant as such? Oh? How interesting. You agree that love is a weakness, then? Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. I do not consider it a limitation. Not leaping into a burning building also happens to be an experience best avoided. I tire of this discussion. Let us move on, shall we? Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> yes? At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Such simple pleasures will only enthrall for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The darkspawn are yet undefeated. No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Yes? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Discuss away. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a grey warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? 
Yes? I can see why you might be suspicious, being a Grey Warden and all. Were I in your shoes, I would feel the same way. Trust me when I say that my encountering you here was serendipity and nothing more. I travel a lot, so I'm bound to meet everyone on the road eventually. If you prefer, I'll take my boy and be on my way. But regretfully, you're the safest spot on this road, without a doubt. Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh, yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits and the like. If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armour, though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform, but my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. Oh, certainly, I can do that for you. Just come with me. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please, tell me. I heard a strange rumour the other day. King Kalen was not really Merrick's son, you see. Merrick's real son is hidden in the bowels of Denerim's palace and has been since he was born. I suppose they feed him cakes all day to keep him content. Maybe he's simple. Or a mage. Merrick's real son, a mage. Can you imagine? That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. The crafters of the Pearl Brothel are threatening to close their doors if they aren't finally recognised as a true guild. Ha! Can you imagine? As if the men weren't blue enough. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Arl Yurian wasn't truly killed at Ostagar. His son, Lord Vaughn, hired Antivan Crows to kill his father before he ever reached the battlefield, only to first be killed by a mob of elves himself. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I'm originally from Orzammar, just as you are, I suspect. You don't have the look of a surface dwarf about you. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. 
I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the dark spawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Ah, yes, your brand. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Anyway, the woman, as I said, accused me of stealing the braces. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigs. Th they're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. Yes, here I am. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Look, we... we don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the lost tigers, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true, but I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. Indeed. Yes. Uh. 
And here we are. Soldier's Peak. Make us breath. Look at the size of her. What a fortress. I told you the map would get us through the tunnels. I wasn't lost, it's just that the map got soggy. Bah! We're here. So, I'll follow you about, from a distance. This place has the stench of death. I expect there's trouble up ahead. Soldier's Peak. Looks like it's seen better days. Better centuries, more like. Once the Wardens flourished, their ranks full, their calibre certain. Now they even accept people like you, Alistair. Hey! Fall back! Fall back already! Taking the peak will not be easy, my lord. I gave the Wardens one chance to die with honour. Instead, they hole up like cowards. We follow the King's advice, then. Starve them out. But the Peak has months of supplies. Then we wait. When they are too weak to lift their weapons, we will send them to their final judgment. Whoa, what was that? Felt a bit woozy there. I'm not mad, am I? You saw it too. How is that possible? This place truly is haunted. Yes, Warden.
The men's morale is low. My spells are of no use in this matter, Commander. There is more to leading men than sorcery, Avernus. I will remind them that they're wardens. Men! I won't lie to you! The situation is grim! Our forces outnumbered, our bellies empty, and our hearts are sagging. But we are wardens! Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns! Archdemons die when they taste our blades! So are we to bend knee to a mere human despot? No! I, for one, will never give up! I, for one, will never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows! So I propose here and now, in these hallowed halls where generations of our brethren stood vigil against darkspawn and evil, that we send a message to that fat bastard. In this sacred place, proud men, strong men, stood defiant and would rather die than submit to tyranny. So brave, even when starving, and my great-great-grandmother stood with them. Everyone knows they were banished, but to murder them like that. King Arlen must have been a monster, but I've gabbed enough. Lead on, my friend. All right. I'm off. Hmm. Natural. Oh, so awful. Ah! <laughs> 
The door won't hold, Archivist. Almost done. The, the truth must be told. What does it matter? We're dead. Our grand rebellion so close. And to die here, a, a stillbirth. We never should have done it. Wardens aren't supposed to oppose kings and princes. Should we stand idly by while... Another one? Rebellion? What's this about a rebellion? If only the book weren't burned. But Sophia must have had her reasons. The Wardens are heroes. Some injustices just can't be ignored. We can only hope. Sifan net becon. Andraste's blood! What? More of Ernest! Whatever it takes! Kaylee A. Benfotos Victos! I command you, fight the king's men! Fool! So much death, suffering, and oh yes, blood! The veil is torn now. Your soul is mine, Avernus! Acolytes, retreat now! The battle is lost! Avernus! What just happened? Oh no, more fighting! I'm off. <laughs>
The warden summoned demons. Can't believe it. And my grandmother, she knew. I believed that my family was better than that. But answers may lay up ahead. Step no further! Get this annoyance away from me! This one would speak with you! This one is the Dryden, Commander, Sophia, <laughs> all these things. Grandmother? You have slain many of the demon ilk to get here. This one would propose a deal. That, or she's really let herself go. My great-great-grandmother is dead. I don't know what that is. This one has tasted her memories, seen her thoughts and hidden places. But she is food for this one. No more, no less. What is one woman child compared to your might? Strike me down if my terms offend. A fool this one would be to betray the Warden. The Soldier's Peak traps me. This one sees so many tantalizing places in the Dryden's memories. This one would see the world herself. For me to be free, into the Old Mage Tower you go and destroy. In return, this one seals the veil. No more demons. No more enemies. Your peak would be safe. Just let this one go into the world. This one will roam. This one will see. This one will feed. But without me, the veil will grow weaker. More demons, more misery. You choose just one of my kind, or many. 
The magics. All moving things. The very stone if you have the power. Something inside keeps my kind locked away. This one knows all, but will only talk after the tower lies broken. Yeah. This one smells the sweet stench of lies upon you. You seek to betray this one. <sighs> Your offer is accepted. Come, follow this one. Gossamer strands only stand between this world and home. Feel it? So deliciously weak here. So frail. The entire world should be as such. But this one will feed the veil. Make it strong. My brethren will not make it easy. Are you ready? You keep the brethren away from me. This one will sew the strands together, make lattice with pain, experience, and exquisite agony. Then we begin. This annoyance away from me! This one would speak with you. This you this one would propose a deal. That, my great great grandmother But she is fool A fool this one would be to be No more demons. No more enemies. Your peak would be safe. Something in You choose just one of my kind. This one knows all. Yeah. You only must destroy. For your purpose, there is nothing more you need. Warden, my family's been looking for answers for over a century. But not like this. I'll support your decision either way. Agreed. Any questions Levy has of the Dryden will be answered. The levy gets his questions answered. You get nothing more. Then you are useless to this one. Die! Now let's see. Which one? First, going.
Ow! My bruises are all bruised now. then. Don't look now. No. <laughs> Alright. Let's grab some glory! Day 32. The subject is not responding to the stimuli. Testing the pain threshold has uncovered nothing. Only three subjects are left. Day 82. If only I could reproduce last night's extraordinary success. Electricity is only a catalyst. The blood is the key. Day 97. Energy and blood. Repeated applications have duplicated the results. I conjecture that success can be induced alchemically. But there are no more subjects left. If only I had one more, or a dozen, the things I could do. Yes. I hear you. Don't disrupt my concentration. Even now the demons seek to replenish their numbers. Are you to thank for this welcomed but temporary imbalance?
Only just. I have only a short time left. Why are you here? What is your intent? Hmm. An admirable goal. But in order to achieve this, the demons must be cut off forever. Agreed. This must be the first priority. The only priority. They were necessary. Any tool, any iota of information that could defeat the fell demons was justified. As a warden, you should know that. Necessary. Having to relieve yourself after an eight-hour ride is necessary. But there's no excuse for summoning demons. <sighs> Charming. A combination of my research and blood magic. But even without that, who else would brave Soldier's Peak? And here, I thought you would rescue me. There is a precise mystical balance here. My every breath is dedicated to keeping the tear in the veil from ripping wider. And you would kill me now. Your narrow-minded actions would ensure that this place teems with their kind. To what questions, I wonder? Ask. The Chantry foolishly forbids blood magic, but there are so many secrets to uncover. As my body decayed, I found ways to extend it. But that can only go so far. Master Mage, uh, sir, my family name has been worth less than dirt for over a century. Do you have any proof that Sophia was a hero? The boy who braved the mists. So you heeded my call. Ha 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 ha, and you are a Dryden. The cosmos has a sense of humor. He was but a boy when he entered the tunnels below the peak. His heart pure, his character certain. In dreams, I gave him the keys he would need. He would be my deliverance. Your great-great-grandmother was the best of us. Brave, charismatic, fiery, utterly devoted to the fight. But still we lost. We fought against a tyrant, you know, so full of vigor then, so blind to consequence. But proof? There's none to be had. Uh, I had hoped. But thank you, Warden. To stop the demonic tide, to correct the miscalculations of the past. Blood magic comes from demons. They could counter every bit of law I knew. But the dark spawn taint, that is alien to them. And it has power. The Wardens use it merely to sense Darkspawn. A triviality. My research has discovered so much more. Hinted at even greater heights. This knowledge could not only save Soldier's Peak, with it the Wardens could grow even more powerful. It was necessary. It was vital. The few meager years of life they would have spent trapped in this tower were nothing compared to the greater goal. I gave their death meaning. You've already read my research. But in time, with the proper materials, I could learn so much more. I have done what I must. But let me undo my greatest of mistakes. Let me cleanse this place. Then, then I will accept whatever justice you feel I merit. Yes. What use would storytelling serve? The tyrant Arland is long dead. 
as is all our noble co-conspirators and the Grand Rebellion. Sophia's corpse may walk and talk, but she too is no more. He ruled with fear and poison, his treachery pit noble against noble in terrible battle. We thought him a monster. We gathered allies to rebel. But the toll of years has erased our failure, hasn't it? It seemed so pressing then. But the kingdom lives on. Too many mouths to quiet. Even sorcery can only go so far. So we met with Tian Kuzland. With him on our side, we had a chance of victory. Instead, the King's Guard ambushed us. Commander Dryden and I barely escaped. Of course, to nudge people to keep our secrets safe. Sophia should have let me nudge harder. Her scruples were her undoing. Perhaps, but it was survival. For months, I prepared the summoning circles, researched the darkest depths of the Fade. That moment was a triumph of demonic law. Dozens of demons, called by my hand. But, with so many variables, I suppose, calculation errors were inevitable. Ugh. I was so close. She gave the order. I would have summoned the demons anyway. Only under Wardens can true magical research continue. A chance to rediscover the secrets of ancient Tevinter. Chantry lies told to subjugate the mages to keep them docile. And how do you know they are right? Their faith would have you swallow a great deal for small comfort. Yes. So be it. My only request, if justice or vengeance drive you, stay your hand until the demons are dealt with. That will do for now. We must go to the Great Hall. There, I will repair the damage I caused so long ago. There will be peril. The demons will fight us every step of the way. Come. Going. I'm off. We must hurry. What do you need? I can't believe my great-great-grandmother was still alive. Well, sort of alive. Sort of dead. I need a drink. We must act quickly. The demons are clawing on the gates. The veil must be closed. I will unravel the summoning circles I drew so long ago. Waves of spirits and demons may come through. Dispatch them. I will begin. First, I must summon the magical energies. I feel them. They're coming. <laughs>
and I'm off. Let's have action! <laughs> Saving the day. You can never resist me! It's over. The veil is strong now. Stronger, at least. I said I'd submit to judgment. And so I shall. Can I be left to experiment in peace? With what time I have left, I will do this. It may take months or years for my research to reach fruition. When it does, I will send for you. Thank you for this, Warden. You've done it, Warden. Soldier's Peak is safe again. That old geezer of Vernus deserves the gallows, if you ask me, but people will do queer things to survive. But if he does the proper research, without the sacrifices and blood magic and all, maybe he'll turn up something good. But there was no proof to redeem my family. Well, I owe. Uh, thanks, Warden. For so long, I was focused on the past, on answers. But I think I would have been better off had I stayed at home. Enough of that, though. I find myself at a loss. You've got a whole fortress now. I suppose I should start plying my trade again. I might use the peak as a base of operations. So many bandits about. But none would dare come here. Nice place to store trade goods. You, of course, will get a sizable discount. Looks like we're done here. A demonic invasion thwarted, a warden base safely rescued. We do good work. 
Once my family comes, I might have some merchandise you could buy. Might tidy the place up a bit, too. Well, my nephew as well. All right. And I'm off. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Welcome back, Warden. 
As you can see, we've been busy. Clean the place up a bit. Even my brother Mikhail came out of hiding. Never will you find a finer smith. Also, got some goods stored here that might interest you. Buy them now before my cousins move it all someplace else. I thought about it, but I figured that it's not a bad thing to believe that you come from a line of lions. Even if the truth is a touch more complicated, our family's belief that we were wronged, it gave us strength to make something of ourselves. King Arlen sounded like a right nasty piece of work. Sophia was branded a traitor. She consorted with blood mages. But in spite of it all, I think she was a hero. We've a big family. When you were away, we all pitched in. Hard to believe there were undead, demons and worse around here, right? I've not a peep from him. Seems to like keeping to himself. But I keep telling the children to stay away from the tower. Certainly. You? You're the warden? My family owes you. Any weapons I make, I will sell you for a discount. I have a family full of traders living a soft life, getting fat. I chose to learn the way of metal and stone. It keeps me strong. Indeed, I have spent my life studying steel, dragon bone, and more. I learned all I could in human lands, and exiled dwarves taught me more. Give me the finest metals and materials, and I can make wonders for you. Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. Why, thank you so much. Why, thank you so much. Warden. Our family owes you a great deal.
You have coin, stranger? With Orzammar closed off, old Tegrin can give you a discount. Fine weapon and arms, dwarven made. There's two things I'm here for. Travel or trade. Understand? You'll have to forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people travelling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now what do I do? Ah, oh, waiting for my helper to find the damn mule, of course. It's freezing! Oh! Oh, I suppose you meant <laughs> why am I out here? As in this part of the country. Allow me to introduce myself. Felix de Grosbois, merchant and entrepreneur at your service. I don't normally take this route, but with the war I was hoping for a bit of luck and good weather in the mountains. Sadly, I've had neither. Ugh, this trip has been one miserable disaster after another. I don't suppose you'd consider helping a fellow out? Of all the other things that went wrong, the worst is this artifact I brought in Jada. It's a control rod, I'm told, for a golem. No point in me keeping it, however, as I'll never get to use it. But, uh, maybe you could? The catch? Uh, yeah. I uh, suppose it is a catch, isn't it? The catch is that the golem didn't come with the rod. <laughs> it's supposed to be down in a village down south, waiting to be activated. Even if I could get down there, which I can't, <laughs> I understand the place has been overrun by Darkspawn. That's not such an issue for adventurous types like yourself, surely? Or I'm hoping that's so, at least. The fellow I brought it from is a long-standing contact. He didn't want to come to Ferelden, however, with all our... troubles. <laughs> he said he got it from the man who owned this golem. But, to be honest, I have no idea if it will work. Hence, the low, low price. <laughs> what do you say? The dwarf I brought it from said it activates and controls a golem. So long as you have it in your hand, the golem does what you say. Might be useful, no? I mean, you look like the sort who could use one, yes? Nothing. I just don't want to have to lug around something that might be taken for a gemstone by some bandit. To be honest, I don't even know if it'll be useful to you. 
I paid too much to simply throw it away. Just as well. As I mentioned before, you'll find the golem down south, in a town called Honleith. I'll mark it here on your map. Just hold up the rod and say Dulaf Gar. That will wake the golem up, so I'm told. I hope it works. Best of luck to you then. Now, I guess it's up to me to find that mule myself. How did a child survive that? The crater is still smoking. It's a boy. Five fingers, five toes. That's all that matters to me. The Maker has answered our prayers. Let's go home, Marta, and raise the Tyke as our own. Going. I'm off. Going. And I'm off. any shortage of these ones. Oh, <laughs> 
Let's have at it! <laughs> Going. Going. Yes. Looks like... like a golem, doesn't it? An actual golem, and not a statue at all. I wonder how it ended up here, of all places. going.
going. All right.
All right. By the Maker, we're saved! You weren't sent by the ban, were you? To save us? A Grey Warden? Here! Thank the Maker for our luck! But if you weren't sent by someone, why are you here? If you don't mind me asking. A merchant? Why would a merchant... Oh, I think I see. This is about shale, isn't it? I should have known. That damnable golem brought us nothing but trouble. My mother sold the rod years ago after it killed my father, and good riddance! My father's name was Wilhelm, mage to the Isles of Redcliffe and a hero in the war against Orlais. And what did he get? One day, my mother found him outside the tower, with so many broken bones she could barely recognize him, and Shale standing over him just like it is now. My father deserved better than that. But if you really want to wake Shale up, well, it's yours now. My mother never talked about it much. I was just a small child when my father died. Look, I know you probably have more important things on your mind, but I really need your help. I know you already saved my life, and I'm grateful, but my daughter is inside the laboratory. She was afraid and, and ran too far in before I could stop her. I don't know how she made it past my father's defenses. One of the men tried to go after her. He was killed, but you could find her, couldn't you? There are defenses my father put down here to keep strangers out. I knew about the barrier, I, I had the key for that, but the rest of it... Well, we never came down here. Ever. I... Don't, it's true. I'm terrified that something's happened to her and she's lying in there, injured. I can't leave here until I know for certain. Surely you can understand that. You risked yourself to get here, didn't you? It's just a little further. That shouldn't be difficult for someone like you. How to activate it? We just used the control rod and the code phrase. Or did Mother give them the wrong one? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She said she never wanted to see Shale activated again. If so, I'll gladly tell you the proper phrase. Just save my little girl, I'm begging you! You will? Thank the Maker! My father's laboratory is just past the next area, I think. She has to be there! Your word? Yes.
All right. As you wish. Watch out! You. Uh, All right. Uh, Battle uh, is then. Yes. What do you mean you've never climbed a tree? Oh look, someone's come to play. You have come to play, haven't you? We're playing a guessing game. It's better with more people. Father? Oh, you can tell him I'm fine. Maybe he'll come and stay with us, too. Anyway, you should go if you're not going to play. Kitty finds you distracting. Kitty's clever. She says you want to take me back to my father, but I'm not going. She would be lonely. You are so kind, Amalia. I would miss you dearly if you left. No! Leave me alone! Kitty! Nothing you say will convince Amalia to go with you. She loves only me now. I am her friend, while you are just a stranger. Oh, did you hear that, Amalia? I have another admirer. That's because you're wonderful, Kitty. I have been bound to this chamber for decades, cut off from all contact. It has been maddening. Release me, mortal, and let me have the girl. Let us return to her father and leave this place forever. That's such a crude way of putting it. I do not wish to harm Amalia. I merely want to see your world through her eyes. Is that so wrong? Hmm. But I do like this one. I like you too, Kitty. But... If it means escaping this prison, I am willing to leave on my own. I agree to your terms. The mage's wards hold me within this chamber, and only a mortal may approach them. There is a trick to disarming the wards, but I do not know it. Perhaps you will succeed where the girl failed. Oh, this is so exciting! Kitty is going to be free! I've always wanted a cat, and Kitty is so perfect and pretty. I like it when Kitty sings to me. I am still trapped. What is the matter? Oh. 
father doesn't like cats, but he never met Kitty. All right. Kitty says Grandpa Wilhelm locked her up in this room. Isn't that awful? All right. Going. And I'm off. Going. Yes. All right. Hmm. Kitty is my best friend. Yes. And I'm off. All right. And I'm off. I was thinking about the sun, silly. <laughs> hmm. And I'm off. Going. Hmm. All right. Yes. I can feel the magic fading. Oh, I had forgotten how it feels not to be caged. Kitty? What's happening? A wonderful thing, my dear, for both of us. I have changed my mind. I like the girl. I do not think I will find another like her. Oh, so I get to go with you after all? <sighs> As you wish. Close your eyes, my darling. This will take but a moment. Yes, this is what I wanted, to see, to feel, as mortals do, yes. And your reward? I'm certain you will find a use for it, creature. I will go now to my father. He will be happy to see me. I can feel the ma- Kid- A wonderful thing, my dear, for both of us. I have changed my mind. I like the girl. I do not think I will find another like her. Oh, so I get to go with you after all? Ugh! I will take her anyhow. She is mine. Kitty! You're scaring me! I won't let you inside me! I won't!
Did it! You freed her! Thank you so much! I'm sorry I ran away, Daddy. I was so scared. It's all right, Butterfly. You're safe now. All the bad creatures are gone. The phrase to activate Shale is Doolan Han. If you still want that bloody thing. I wouldn't if I were you. Now we should go, and quickly. Thank you again. We owe you our lives. I knew that the day would come when someone would find the control rod. And not even a mage this time. Probably stumbled across the rod by accident, I suppose. Typical. So it knew what it was doing. Shocking. I stood here in this spot and watched the wretched little villagers scurry around me for, oh, I have no idea how long, many, many years. Oh, you poor dear. That would be really, really boring. And the villagers had no idea they were being watched. Creepy. Then one wonders that you wouldn't be grateful to the one who allowed you to stretch your legs, Gollum. Hmm. Another mage, I see. Charming. <sighs> I was just beginning to get used to the quiet, too. Tell me, are all the villagers dead? Some got away, then. How unfortunate. Not as much as it would think, there was running and screaming, and then days and days of watching the darkspawn prowl around. I would never have thought there could be something less interesting than the villagers, but there it was. Well, go on then. Out with it. What is its command? 
Perhaps. I may have forgotten after all the years of being called Gollum. Gollum, fetch me that chair. Do be a good Gollum and squash that insipid bandit. And let's not forget, Gollum, pick me up. I tire of walking. It does have the control rod, doesn't it? I am awake, so it must. I see the control rod, yet I feel... Go on, order me to do something. Oh, go on. It will be fun. And, uh, nothing. I feel nothing. I feel no compulsion to carry out its command. I suppose this means the rod is... Broken? Don't be ridiculous. Well, I wouldn't mind killing the birds. Those evil birds and their foul droppings. I could crush them all. Hmm. I suppose if I can't be commanded, this means... I have free will, yes? It is simply... What should I do? I have no memories beyond watching this village for so long. I have no purpose. I find myself at a bit of a loss. What about it? It must have awoken me for some reason, no? What did it intend to do with me? I see. Wonderful. I suppose I have two options, do I not? Go with it, or go elsewhere? I do not even know what lies beyond this village. Yes, very likely. Did I? I remember that I had a former master. The mage with the furry brows who poked and prodded and barked orders. Did I kill him? I hope I did kill him. Perhaps the last order he barked was, Gollum, stop crushing my head. Ah! Thankfully, I imagine that possessing a useless control rod will make it far less inclined to treat me similarly. I have no idea. How does it trust anything else without a control rod? Fair enough. Then I promise not to sit on it accidentally or without sufficient provocation. Good enough? I watched this village for so long, unable to move or act. My memories of anything before are vague at best. So I have no idea what I want to do. I'm glad to be mobile. Is that not enough? Are you certain you want to bring that thing with us? It could be dangerous and large. Good point. Better it than me, anyhow. I will follow it about then, for now. I am called Shale, by the way. This should be interesting.
I see. As you like. Right away. Allow me. Yes. I yes. can do that for you. Hmm.
Yes. Allow me. I could do that for you. Hello. Blood and yes. damnation! Stop poking me. Let's wipe them out quickly. Fine. Ah! <laughs> 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 
Ooh. I'm wounded. <laughs> Run in fear. I see I bested them even while unconscious. I am that amazing. Hmm. Hmm. Woo! <laughs>